man reading should be man intensely alive. The book should be a ball of light in one's hand. Literature is news that stays news. There is no reason why the same person should like the same books at 18 and at 48. The apparition of these faces in the crowd, petals on a wet black bow. And the days are not full enough, and the nights are not full enough, and life slips by like a field mouse, not shaking the grass. Speak against unconscious oppression. Speak against the tyranny of the unimaginative. Speak against bonds. Real education must ultimately be limited to those who insist on knowing. The rest is merely sheep herding. A slave is one who waits for someone to come and free him. No man understands a deep book until he has seen and lived at least part of its contents. I desired my dust to be mingled with yours forever and forever and forever. The artist is always beginning. Any work of art which is not a beginning, an invention, a discovery, is of little worth. If a man isn't willing to take some risk for his opinions, either his opinions are no good, or he's no good. Poetry is a sort of inspired mathematics, which gives us equations, not for abstract figures, triangles, squares, and the like, but for the human emotions. If one has a mind which inclines to magic rather than science, one will prefer to speak of these equations as spells or incantations. It sounds more arcane, mysterious, recondite. Rhythm must have meaning. With one day's reading, a man may have the key in his hands. A real building is one in which the eye can light and stay lit. Glance is the enemy of vision. This is no book. Whoever touches this, touches a man. The temple is holy because it is not for sale. I have tried to write paradise. Do not move. Let the wind speak. That is paradise. Let the gods forgive what I have made. Let those I love try to forgive what I have made. The sum of human wisdom is not contained in any one language, and no single language is capable of expressing all forms and degrees of human comprehension. It is difficult to write a paradiso when all the superficial indications are 
that you ought to write an apocalypse. The only thing one can give an artist is leisure in which to work. To give an artist leisure is actually to take part in his creation. When words cease to cling close to things, kingdoms fall, empires wane and diminish. Good art, however immoral, is wholly a thing of virtue. Good art cannot be immoral. By good art, I mean art that bears true witness. I mean the art that is most precise. The serious artist must be as open as nature. Nature does not give all of herself in a paragraph. She is rugged and not set apart into discrete categories. Like a skin of loose silk blown against a wall, she walks by the railing of a path and she is dying piecemeal of a sort of emotional anemia. And round about there is a rabble of the filthy, sturdy, unkillable infants of the very poor. They shall inherit the earth. In her is the end of breeding. Her boredom is exquisite and excessive. She would like someone to speak to her and is almost afraid that I will commit that indiscretion. And the good writer chooses his words for their meaning. But that meaning is not a set, cut-off thing like the move of knight or pawn on a chessboard. It comes up with roots, with associations, with how and where the word is familiarly used or where it has been used brilliantly or memorably. I would hold the rosy, slender fingers of the dawn for you. Mi amor, what do I love and where are you? That I lost my center fighting the world. The dreams clash and are shattered. And that I tried to make a paradise on earth. Good writers are those who keep the language efficient. That is to say, keep it accurate. Keep it clear. It doesn't matter whether the good writer wants to be useful or whether the good writer wants to be harm. Small talk comes from small bones. Anyone who is too lazy to master the comparatively small glossary necessary to understand Chaucer deserves to be shut out from the reading of good books forever. Great literature is simply language charged with meaning to the utmost possible degree. Nothing written for pay is worth printing, only what has been written against the market. Don't be blinded by the theorists and lying press. What you love well remains. No teacher has ever failed from ignorance. That is empiric professional knowledge. Teachers fail because they cannot handle the class. 
Real education must ultimately be limited to men who insist on knowing. The rest is mere sheep herding. The thought of what America would be like if the classics had a wide circulation troubles my sleep. Canticio del Sol It ought to be illegal for an artist to marry. If the artist must marry, let him find someone more interested in art, or his art, or the artist part of him than in him. After which, let them take tea together three times a week. In our time, the curse is monetary illiteracy, just as inability to read plain print was the curse of earlier centuries. Where the dead walk and the living were made of cardboard, fundamental accuracy of statement is the one sole morality of writing. Come, let us pity those who are better off than we are. Come, my friend, and remember that the rich have butlers and no friends, and we have friends and no butlers. Pay no attention to the criticism of men who have never themselves written a notable work. The individual cannot think and communicate his thought. The governor and legislator cannot act effectively or frame his law without words. And the solidity and validity of these words is in the care of the damned and despised literati, when their very medium, the very essence of their work, the application of word to thing, goes rotten, i.e. becomes slushy and inexact, or excessive, or bloated. The whole machinery of social and of individual thought and order goes to pot. Go in fear of abstractions. A people that grows accustomed to sloppy writing is a people in process of losing grip on its empire and on itself. The eyes of this dead lady speak to me, for here was love was not to be drowned out, and here, desire not to be kissed away. The tree has entered my hands. The sap has ascended my arms. The tree has grown in my breast, downward. The branches grow out of me like arms tree you are, moss you are, you are violets with wind above them, a child so high you are, and this is folly to the world. A nation which neglects the perceptions of its artists declines, after a while it ceases to act and merely survives. There is probably no use in telling this to people who can't see it without being told. All things are a-flowing, sage Heraclitus says, but a tawdry cheapness shall outlast all days. Nothing matters but the equality of the affection in the end.
that has carved the trace in the mind. Dove Sta Memoria Let the gods speak softly of us. <laughs> 